In this series of videos, I'm talking about settings for the Apple TV 4K. This is the 2022 model, latest one. And in this video, I wanna talk about settings, preferable settings that I use on my Apple TVs for audio video. And for reference, in the living room here, I am connected to an 83 inch LG G2 OLED. I use very similar settings in my theater though, where I run a JVC NX7 projector. So to take a look at audio and video settings, let's go to settings. And the third option down is video and audio. Now there's a few specific items here. We'll kind of talk through each one as we go. At the top, we see this option, enable Dolby Vision. When you see this, keep in mind, this is really just a test. You don't have to technically enable it here to make it work within playing video content and all of that. What the Apple TV really wants to do by default in a lot of cases is run the menus, run the entire UI in an HDR mode. And that might be HDR 10, that might be Dolby Vision. But with these settings, we're not gonna wanna do that. We're gonna wanna run the UIs, we're gonna wanna run the general box in standard dynamic range. And so we don't wanna enable Dolby Vision. What we want here on the second option is our format set to 4K SDR. If you go into format, there's all kinds of different options in here. And again, what we're gonna do is let the Apple TV automatically shift to the right dynamic range for the type of content that it's showing, but there's really no reason to run the Apple TV, run your displays in HDR mode on the menus and in its kind of default state. In terms of HDMI output, we can go for YCBCR or RGB options. If you're connecting to a TV, I would choose YCBCR that maps more to video levels and more to the type of input output that the actual display device would be expecting. Chroma, we have a couple of options here. This has to do with how like the color space of the signal is compressed. And keep in mind that when you're actually playing video content, everything that you're gonna be playing from the streaming services or whatever is gonna be natively in 422. And as that signal is sent out of the Apple TV, it's sent, your, sent to your display, it's image processed, and then put the, the final image is put up on the screen, that color information is re-expanded back to what we call 444, which would be uncompressed color. I do prefer 444 because in general, menus and text and things like that will look a bit better when a, when a device is outputting 444 instead of 420 in the menus. That goes for like a PC, if you have a PC connected to your television and for the Apple TV as well. It would be really nice if we had an option to prefer 422 because some display devices or many display devices actually do their video processing in a 422 color space. So it would be better to output at that let everything get processed, no extra color conversions. But I think it's safe and I think it's preferable, especially here with a flat panel display to just say prefer 444. To do this all as well though, I should recommend, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the right kind of HDMI cable. You should have at least an 18 gigabit per second HDMI cable between your Apple TV and your display. If you have a newer display and it is HDMI 2.1 capable, you could get a higher speed cable a 48 gigabit per second cable. Although keep in mind that the Apple TV, at least for right now, isn't really taking advantage of that extra HDMI bandwidth. All right, so the next one here is really the kicker, match content, match dynamic range and match frame rate. I have both of these on and I strongly, strongly recommend that you run with both of these on as well. Yes, when you go from the menus to starting playback of a, of a show or a movie, you're gonna get a little bit of a black screen there's an HDMI resync uh, as most video content is actually in like 24 frames per second instead of 60. And again, we're moving from the menus operating in SDR to HDR 10 or Dolby Vision. There's gonna be a little bit of renegotiation and a little bit of display processing that has to happen to change those modes over. Now on a television, honestly, that time is, is really inconsequential. We're talking like a second or two it can be a little more painful in a home theater if you have a projector, particularly if you're using some of the advanced features of some projectors where they have color filters and a lot of other things that have to happen when the color space and the dynamic range and all of that changes. But if you're dealing with just a flat panel TV, I really feel this is the superior way to run the box and just accept that little short black screen. HDMI advancements are in, are in the works to actually completely kind of take away that blacking out but not all devices support them yet. We'll see if that comes to newer model televisions and newer model Apple TVs and other boxes. So that's really it on the video side of things. Let's take a look at the audio side. In the same menu, if we go down a little further, eventually we get to the audio section. We can see two options here, an audio output and an audio format. 
you really shouldn't have to change this. If the Apple TV negotiates the right capabilities of your system, this should just be set by default. In terms of output, here it says TV speakers. All that really matters is that you want the Apple TV outputting to whatever it's connected to. Now the Apple TV does do some pretty cool stuff like being able to send its audio to Bluetooth speakers or if you have like Apple HomePods, you could even have multiple HomePods and run them in a stereo config. I think that's pretty cool, but if you have a more kind of traditional setup, if you're using TV speakers, if you're using a soundbar, or in my case, you're using actually an external audio system with a preamplifier, amplifier, and external speakers, you just have the Apple TV output via HDMI. It's gonna be the first option and there's really not gonna be anything else to select from. What matters more here is in this audio format, we have two options here. One, a change format, which can be on or off. And then I have an immersive audio entry, which is Dolby Atmos currently set to on. So if the Apple TV is connected to a system that it recognizes is immersive audio capable, Dolby Atmos capable, this configuration option will show up and by default, Apple will turn it on. If you don't see this, it means that the Apple TV doesn't think it's connected to a system that can actually process the real immersive audio. If you do have a system that does immersive audio and you don't see this, there's a negotiation, there's a communication issue between the devices, maybe power stuff down, reconnect it, try a different HDMI cable, or, or look at the settings of whatever it is you're connected to, something along those lines. But this is really all you need. Turn on the Dolby Atmos, but leave the change format off. Keep in mind that like the Apple TV doesn't really support that many audio codecs right now. It basically does a selection of Dolby. It does a selection of Dolby codecs, Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, and Dolby Atmos via their MAT, basically like Dolby Digital Plus uh, encoded Dolby Atmos. And then other than that, it's like AAC and some of the other basic stuff, most of which will just get output by the Apple TV as what we call PCM, which is uncompressed digital audio, again, all over that HDMI connection. Your television, your soundbar, your audio system, these are very, very basic signals in, in all of home theater, and they should really have no problem at all processing these things. Unless you have a very specific need and maybe some older gear that's a little more limited in its capabilities, you don't and you shouldn't need to be changing format as all changing format might do is kind of like standardizing the output of the device and compressing things back down again, really something to be avoided. And hopefully again, you shouldn't have to use it anyway in most systems. Now Apple TV doesn't support DTS, yes, and it doesn't support Dolby Audio under the lossless True HD banner. So we don't do normal, the Apple TV doesn't do normal Dolby True HD, and it doesn't do lossless Dolby Atmos True HD style audio either. We all remain crossing our fingers. Come on, Apple. WWDC this year, upgrade tvOS. Let's get some DTS audio flowing for the new IMAX uh, enhanced audio that's coming to Disney Plus, as well as the ability to bitstream those audio codecs from apps like Plex and Infuse. We would love it. Hopefully someday, hopefully someday we'll see it. Or just give us lossless streaming from iTunes directly. So there you go, that's how I set up my Apple TVs for audio and video settings. If you have any questions on that, some technical questions or something that you didn't understand, sound off in the comments and let me know. Also as well, if you have kind of a special setup that requires you to maybe deviate from this, this recommendation for a specific reason, share that in the comments. Let other people know because maybe other folks have a similar system to you and could benefit from some of the tweaks or adjustments that you've had to make in your own system. So take a look at the other videos in this series. I'm breaking down a whole bunch of specific and individual Apple TV settings, preferences, capabilities, and best practices that I use it in my home theater systems. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a bunch of ways to do that down below in the description. And please do all that regular YouTube stuff, like subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, and come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.